there's no place like home for the holidays and no matter how far away you roam if you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze for the holidays you can Welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Horror for the Holidays Stocking Stuffers. I'm Jeff Searcy. I'm Jay Logsdon. Jay, you know, there are some movies out there that are universally regarded as great movies. Yep. Just, even if you if it's not your cup of tea, if it's not your genre, you're like, no, that's still a good movie, though. Yeah. No, Jay, apparently not. On this episode of Stocking Stuffers, Jay, you will be trying to guess what well-regarded movie I am reading one-star reviews of. I will give you three to four hints. If you get it in three, good. If not, I'll give you a fourth hint. All right. And we'll see how many of these you can get based yeah. on these reviews. In a, in a stocking, uh, probably a recurring Stocking Stuffers uh, idea that we're calling Mystery Movie. Yes. All right, Jay, here we go. It's a shame there's not a zero star rating on this thing. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to bite down on a pencil and give this one star. I'm I know I'm in the minority on this, but I'm proud to share it with the world. Blank is one of the most pathetic excuses for a sequel I've ever seen. The first movie was a perfect masterpiece of horror and suspense. It's legitimately the only horror movie that's made me cry out of fear. This movie is just boring, cheesy fluff with masculine, forgettable characters that are just there to die. No sense of claustrophobia or desperation. The increasingly ineffective child in danger trope. Random subplots that don't go anywhere. And worst of all, no horror or suspense whatsoever. Oh, and apparently it turns out that the villains of the first movie are uninteresting, unoriginal, unoriginal concepts. They're basically just bees. This should have never been turned into a franchise. Who? Okay. The idea of franchise, the idea of like child endangerment tropes, the idea that this is a second movie. Aliens. Correct. All right. That was a review of Aliens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I I don't I don't even have what any words. Say, what do you have to say to that, Jay? I don't I I, I can't respond. I, I don't know what to say in response there, to that. There are people walking around out here with that opinion of one of I would say probably one of the greatest action horror movies ever made. And and absolutely like as you know, what one of the few movies where, you know, I, I think Alien is better than Aliens, but one of the few movies where like I think there's a legitimate shout where you could say the sequel is better than the original. Oh, no, depending on your taste, you would definitely have a favorite between the two of them, and I would say equally valid yeah, choice and, either way. Yes, both are valid. That mm -hmm. is, that is, and, and then someone who loved the first one so much to yeah. then just turn around and write that about aliens is, <laughs> is, is bonkers. Which, my number one question was, what kind of bees is this guy around that they burst out of people's chests and reproduce by kidnapping people? The only, the only way... The only thought process I have for where they came up with bees is they have a queen. Is they have a queen? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but it's like, if anything, I would say the xenomorphs are closer to ants. How their colonies are organized. But yep. Still, ants also don't use people for reproduction. So, <laughs> all right, Jay, you got aliens pretty quickly. I was hoping you would, since it's one of your favorites. All right, let's go to another classic movie. Got to pull up these reviews. Oh boy. Let's see, Jay. I mean, you know what? It boggles my mind that some of these things are allowed to remain up. <sighs> okay. One star. Wasn't scary. I wanted it to be, but I felt that although it was well-paced, it was a bit too slow. The tension in Paranorma... Paranorma. They spelled it Paranorma. I'm guessing <laughs> Paranoia. The, the, the tension in Paranorman. <laughs> yes, the Paranorman just wasn't there for me, Jay. No, this horror movie is just not that scary. Okay. My instinct was Halloween. No. no. Okay. 
All right, wow. All right, I'll give you another one. Trashy and boring as it looks, nothing even happens until the last 10 minutes of the movie. Very dull and slow paced. Save your time, movie not worth watching. So we got we got a lot of references to tension. You know it's supposed to be it's supposed to be tension filled and suspenseful. You know it's a horror movie. And and then the other thing I I picked up on is the like people calling it bore because like like my thought was like you know the the ho- you know the reason I said Halloween Halloween's like a classic but I would you know is it a fun movie no not really no. like I I still think it's better than Halloween two I think Halloween two might be the least fun Halloween movie might be a better movie than some of the other ones but I think it's the least fun um and so so but that was kind of my thought process was I was like maybe maybe it's people who are like well it's so boring nothing really happens till the end and maybe that was that was that was kind of where my brain was at. Um, mm. And if I'm going off of that, and I'm going off of kind of everything we've said, and I'm also maybe stretching a little bit here because you already picked another movie I like, Black Christmas. No. Okay. I will, I'll give you a hint outside of these reviews. This is a movie that I like. Okay. I, I mean, you, I think you like it as well, but this is one that I've talked about liking a lot. Okay. <sighs> So bad. People make fun of Morbius for being a bad movie. But this movie was so bad. No suspense. No tension. Talked up about the special effects all the time, but they look stupid to me, bro. One star. Oh, no. Oh, no. (laughs) To this person, whatever movie this is, is, is worse than Morbius. But it's regarded as a classic by everyone else. And, okay, special effects, like, the special effects are not good, which leads me to believe maybe special effects, maybe creature effects heavy. The Thing. Yes. All right. These are reviews of The Thing. Oh, my God. (laughs) There are people walking around out here. This is how they regard The Thing. And this is not... Worse than Morbius. This, uh, there are, between the three-star and lower reviews, there are 626 three-star or lower reviews. Oh, my thing. God. <laughs> the internet was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that before, and I'll say it again. <laughs> yeah. So Some joyless, joyless people walking around out there, Jay. You know that John Carpenter movie that everybody loves? Yeah, worse than Morbius. Regarded as one of the best uh, special effects movies ever done with practical effects. I think they're garbage, bro. Looks stupid to me. (laughs) All right, let's go to... uh, This one has a lot of one-star reviews. Worst movie I've ever seen. Never seen a movie so obsessed with feminism. The movie just hates on men the entire time. It's very unrealistic on behalf of a man's power compared to a woman. Also, half the characters are very annoying. One star. Thanks for your time. 34 people found this helpful. Oh, no. Okay, uh, someone's complaining about feminism. <laughs> yeah. Which, granted, uh, again, uh, also complaining, the aliens things, never talked about how, because they're like, it's just a masculine movie. And it's like the, the Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver. Sigourney Weaver, you know. the hero <laughs> of the movie. <laughs> Sigourney Weaver. When I think of masculine, I think of Sigourney Weaver. Yep. By the way, have you seen that thing where Sigourney Weaver is like, I went, I went to go see my doctor, and, and and they asked me to stop masturbating or something like that. Do you want to guess now, or do you want another hint? Uh, give me another hint. All right, one star. I'm married, so to imply that all men are evil and have the power is bullshit. Wife has all the power because if not, I get nagged to death. Women run the world, and if anybody disagrees, they have never been married. What movie could this be about? Oh, oh my way, gosh. I didn't go digging for these, by the way. These are the top <laughs> these are some of the top reviews on Google. Oh what could <laughs> what could this be about? <laughs> that, so my thought is it's a movie we're going to do for this podcast, but haven't done yet. My thought is the 2019 Black Christmas. No. Okay. This movie is another movie that leans toward women empowerment. Empowered I am, by the way. (laughs) And that it can be accomplished with togetherness. So overall, this movie is but. And I wouldn't recommend it to Helen Keller. One star. What? Oh my god. It's going to be so obvious when you say it. Well, it's not because these things are... 
<laughs> these reviews have been bonkers. But I feel I, I just feel like it's gonna be so obvious once you say it. Uh, okay, people come together. Uh, <laughs> female empowered men have all the power. What could this movie be? <laughs> this is why I knew this. When I read these, this is what inspired me to make this segment. Oh man. <laughs> Jay's just over there racking his brain like, oh my god, what could they be talking about? Is it about? Nightmare on Elm Street? <laughs> it is not. Okay. All right, here's the final clue before I tell you. They should not have made such a feminist movie for a Christmas movie oh. or a horror. They should print feminist movie on paper and wipe they butt with it. <laughs> One star. <laughs> so it's it's a black Christmas. <laughs> Which one? Uh, that's the, the the coming together thing makes me think Black Christmas 2006. <laughs> this was the Black Christmas 1974. Jesus Christ. And these reviews are about, oh, you should see the reviews on 2006. Maybe I'll throw those in here oh, one day. Oh, my God. But no, this is 1974, like the unimpeachable classic. Oh, one. my God. <laughs> I was worried, but I was like, they, they can't be talking about Black Christmas. They can't be talking about Black Christmas. But they can be, They can Jay. be. <laughs> it's the glory of the internet. You get to see how stupid people really are. Oh. All right. Let's go to a new one. After your spirit's been crushed, let's crush it some more. <laughs> Funniest movie of all time. Couldn't control my laughter while watching this nonsense storyline and this horrible excuse for a killer. One star. Uh, this is my review of Conjuring 2. <laughs> um, uh, no, um, okay. Oh. For me, it's one of the big three. And based off of the idea of funny... Although they probably like mean it ironically, but I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with nightmare. It is all right. All right, I'll read you the the other two clues. A campy, gory film that doesn't even follow its own rules for how Freddy is able to influence events in the dream and real world. No one gives a polished or believable performance. And pointless nonsense. All it does is satisfy some strange bloodlust desire in the young. Okay, if you can take the unbelievable, stupid teenage soap style anxiety, even if it's art, it's dodgy. <laughs> it's um, dodgy, mate. <laughs> was that Simon Phillips? <laughs> uh, the uh, I went and saw I went and saw Nightmare on Elm Street on the big screen. I, I you know, I've, I'd seen it before. It had been a little while, but I went and saw it on the big screen, and. Everyone makes fun of the long armed Freddy moment when his when his arms get really long. Everyone thinks that's really funny. Nobody I've never seen anybody mention, not 30 seconds later, he does the silliest run that like you've ever seen. He just like goes like Woo! Yeah. <laughs> also, um I it was one of those I was sitting there watching it and I went, oh my god, it's it's scream. It's because like you're introduced to a character who you think is going to be the main character. And then they die because the main character is someone else. Yeah. Which I just thought, like, it was something that I never put together. I was like, oh, my God. Like, he laid the groundwork for the opening of Scream in Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, yeah. Wes Craven is a genius. <laughs> All right, Jay. Here we go. Absolutely horrible. Poor acting and comedic at its best. Haven't watched any of the others. But if the first one is indi any indication, absolutely pathetic. As much as the main character gets beat up in this, she should be the UFC champion of the world, the toughest human ever. I can't believe I wasted hours of my life watching this. Hours. Hmm. Which I don't think I don't think they meant hours. I think it's it's probably not a multiple hour movie. <laughs> so all right, person takes a beating. It's a female female lead. Halloween. No. Okay. Couldn't stand one or two, so probably won't watch the other five or ten. Can't stand the end. The guy just drools all over the place. I hate him. He drools in 13 Ghosts, too. I've seen dogs who drool less than him. There's a reason why they make fun of that scene. It's not to mention it was so easy to make fun of it because the movie was so dumb. It's one of those movies where the trailer is better than the movie. Jeff, you might have given it away. Oh, uh, yeah? Is it Scream? 
Yes. All right. <laughs> I thought you might get that for Matthew Lillard. <laughs> I, I, you know, when I think of Matthew Lillard, I think of drooling. Yes, that drooling motherfucker, <laughs> Matthew Lillard. If we ever meet him, we're going to be like, Matt, stop drooling. <laughs> It'll be like what I'm like, I don't know, it's a dumb review. <laughs> Again, that was not hard to find. That was right at the top. Oh, my God. For yet another unimpeachable classic, considered one of the thing that revived the slasher genre. Stupid. <laughs> one star review, Matt, Matthew Lillard drools everywhere. <laughs> All right, Jay, it's time for our final selection tonight. All right. Are you ready? This is going to be a little bit different. Okay. It's a five-star review, and it's of Krampus the Christmas Devil. <laughs> that would be funny. None of those exist, not I hope. On, not on this episode. <clears throat> this is not just a bad movie. It's a terrible movie. Everything that made the first two movies good is gone in this film. The movie is essentially a two-hour toy commercial. Once the director found out he could make more money off merchandise than the plot, he switched the storyline in that direction. Plot inconsistencies don't matter as long as more toys could be made. The actors seem tired. They're pretty much just going through the motion. The production gets lazy with location and effects. It's about the almighty dollar. If you like this movie as a kid, take another look. Painfully unwatchable. <sighs> Boy. The idea of, like, action figures. So, like, like it's a movie maybe with, like, a lot of toys. Hmm. Not a horror movie. I'm going to say Return of the Jedi. <laughs> How did you know? That is literally <laughs> the top one-star review for Return of the Jedi. See, I thought you might guess uh, Michael Bay's Transformers. Oh. <laughs> I don't know that anyone... I You know, I didn't like any of those movies. So, yeah. I, but my brain didn't even go there. I just went... <laughs> Like what is what is a third movie, like that you know uh, that is considered a classic. All right, Jay. and there aren't many of those. It's it's that maybe Return of the King, and I guess uh, I guess Dream Warriors. That's that's a third movie that's considered a classic. Yep. Oh, and and how can we forget Halloween three, the most classic? Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a classic. All right, Jay, I lied. You get a bonus movie. All right, this movie is one that you hold dear. Okay, I'll tell you that much. This movie is an absolute disaster in the realm of cinema. A catastrophic collision of horror and comedy that's an insult to both genres. This film is an appalling waste of time, embodying every imaginable flaw that, a pl that could plague a movie. From start to finish, this is an antagonizing roller coaster of inconsistency. It's an attempt to blend horror and comedy, and all it results in is a grotesque mismatch, an indecisive mess that leaves viewers disoriented and disconnected. It's as if the filmmakers couldn't decide whether they wanted to make you scream or laugh, so they settled for a chaotic combination of both that never achieves either. Let's talk characters. Or rather, the cardboard cutouts masquerading as characters. They're so one-dimensional and uninteresting that you'd forget their names before the movie's halfway through. There's no investment in their fate. They're nothing but hollow shells, and when the horror does strike finally, you couldn't care less about their predicament. Predictability drips from every frame of this disaster. It follows the most tired horror tropes, making it an exercise in patience rather than a thrilling experience. The scares are about as surprising as a broken jack-in-the-box, cheap and utterly ineffective. You could practically set your watch by when the next jump scare will happen, and the attempts at building tension fall flatter than a deflated balloon. Oh, and don't even get me started on the wasted potential. This premise... Excellent, but did the movie explore it? Nope. It barely skimmed the surface, robbing the audience of any depth or intrigue that might have salvaged this sinking ship. The pacing is an absolute disaster. It's like a bad symphony conductor. Some moments drag on forever while others rush by so quickly you'll wonder if you ever missed a plot point or two. And the climax, it's as rushed as unsatisfying as you'd come to expect, leaving you more bewildered than fulfilled. This movie is the epitome of cinematic disappointment. It's a colossal waste of time and potential that leaves you feeling cheated and yearning for those lost hours of your life. This movie isn't just bad. It's a travesty, a blight on the art of filmmaking that should serve as a cautionary tale for future filmmakers on what not to do. Avoid it at all costs unless you enjoy subjecting yourself to an exercise in cinematic torture. Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. 
No. Okay. <laughs> Good guess, though. <laughs> you said it's a movie I hold dear, and I was like, I don't know. This review is long, Jay, but you need to read it anyway. To cut to the chase, this movie is very bad. It's just a generic storyline with generic characters. It follows the pace and style of a children's movie. However, I wouldn't let anyone under 10 watch it. This movie tries to teach important lessons, but I'm guessing all it teaches most people is that they couldn't care less about the lessons. No kid is going to learn anything from this. One good thing about this movie is it doesn't rely on CGI, but the makeup effects look very stupid and bad. This movie is straight up confusing. Some parts try to be scary, and other parts try to be funny. Horror comedies might not be my favorite, but this is just the worst of the lot. The trailer is better than the actual thing. The only remotely unsettling thing happens two-thirds into the movie. As a matter of fact, seeing that in the trailer is the only reason I even watched this movie. Please read the reviews and do not go to this movie. Okay, so no, they said no CGI, it's the makeup. And there's an unsettling thing like two thirds of the way through the movie. Uh, like the, I think those are the big plot points it I picked said, up on. It's paced like a children's movie and rehashing again the generic plot line and generic characters. Uh, Cabin in the Woods. No. Okay. I, uh, that was that, a good guess. Too CGI for like, but I was like, I was like, that was my thought. That is a good guess. Especially though. all the complaining about horror comedy. All right. This movie is not worth watching. It's not good at all. It might be scary for a little kid, but for an adult, give me a break. I wouldn't recommend it watching if you're looking for an alternative style horror movie. Honestly, if you're watching movies and making fun of them, this is the perfect movie. I can't stop you from watching it, but I'm warning you, it's going to disappoint you. Is it Krampus? It is. Oh my god. That One, there's, there's plenty of CGI in Krampus, I'm pretty sure. Did you like that book I read at the beginning? That guy's manifesto against Krampus that, that made me pick Krampus for this. <laughs> oh my god. That is that guy spent all that time and that was just eight months ago, by the way. That's not like a guy, you know, an early hater or something like that. This guy has recently watched the movie and hates it that much to write this this is the top Google review. Let me keep scrolling. Oh. Apparently it's not gonna scroll. <laughs> but yes, it's uh six yeah. Seven paragraphs. Oh my long. god! <laughs> All about talking why he doesn't like. It, it, Not just that he doesn't like it; that it is the worst thing he's ever seen in either horror or comedy, and that it's not even really a movie; it's a travesty. It's, you know, it's. It, I wouldn't say it's like a classic by any means, but like, it's a fun movie. I was like, gonna it's say it's very funny. It cuts the tension very well in a lot of scenes. I was going to say, yes, I wouldn't say it's like the best thing I've ever seen or anything like that, but a cinematic travesty. I mean, it's a fun, entertaining movie. We took it. I mean, even my wife thought it was pretty good, and she doesn't even care for horror movies. I, I You and I have seen it back-to-back -back years, like gone to see it in theaters. Like We're probably going to go again this year. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Well, that just that just goes to show you, uh, getting clothes for Christmas is not a great yeah. idea. It's real bad, Jay. And guess what? That's just skimming the surface. I still got twelve more of these things I already pulled. Oh, I'm so excited! <laughs> excited might not be the right <laughs> word. <laughs> Intrigued. Let's use that word. Hmm. Uh, but yeah. Um, anything else we we want to? mention mm, i don't know jay you, what movie are we watching next uh we are doing a little uh what did we decide on we're doing a little uh mother krampus 2 sleigh ride oh we've been waiting for that one for a while been waiting for that one to pop up on the wheel and it did not disappoint this time oh but jay did you think you were going to escape that easily i did but <laughs> i don't know there was part of me that was expecting something else it's the Game Master, Jay. He's got BuzzFeed quizzes oh, for no. you again. <laughs> you know, I was looking through BuzzFeed quizzes last night in preparation for this, and I was like, there's some really, really stupid quizzes on this website. Let's do one. I know this is strange, Jay, but we can guess your birth month based on the 2010s movies you choose. All right. <laughs> Pick a movie. Avengers Endgame, Crazy Stupid Love, Doctor Strange, Gone Girl, John Wick, Little Women, Moana, Ocean's 8, 
Pitch Perfect, Tangled, Venom, or Wreck-It Ralph? Uh, Pitch Perfect. Pitch Perfect. All right. I'm glad you were able to remember all those choices. I was just waiting. For, I, I was literally going by like, okay, Avengers Endgame. I like that one. And then you're like, Doctor Strange. I was like, ooh, do I like that one more? And so I was just listening for like, which one do I like the best? All right. What's next, Jay? 127 Hours, Black Panther, Carol, Despicable Me, Friends with Benefits, Hereditary, Joker, Me Before You, One Day, Spider-Man Homecoming, The Social Network, or Wild? Uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Probably my favorite Marvel movie. Certainly probably like top two. It and the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Choose your fave. A Simple Favor, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Green Book, Hidden Figures, Kingsman, Lady Bird, Moonlight, Now You See Me, Paddington, Ready or Not, The Amazing Spider-Man, or Your Name. Is it is it the first Kingsman, Kingsman the Secret Service? Yes. Ooh, King, ooh Kingsman or Ready or Not, those are both really good. Those are good movies. Oh, gun, to, gun to my head. I'm going to say Ready or Not. Okay. Which film do you prefer? 12 Years a Slave, About Time, Captain America Civil War, Everest, Hush, Inside Out, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. <laughs> <laughs> it's that one, isn't it? Midsommar, Phantom Thread, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, The Babadook, or Whiplash. I think I'm going to go Midsommar off of that list. Okay. But Jay, whether it's in a look or it's in a book, you can't get away from the Babadook. <laughs> Take a look. It's in a book. The Babadook. <laughs> You know what to do by this point, Jay. A ghost story. Bridesmaids. Deadpool. Gifted. Hotel Transylvania. It Follows. Love, Rosie. Minions. Parasite. Suicide Squad. The Conjuring. Or World War Z. Oh, you know it's going to be The Conjuring. No. Um, is it? Is it? Is it the David Goyer Suicide Squad or is it the James Gunn Suicide Squad? The David Goyer. Ooh, no, thank you. No. Um, the James Gunn one, though, was really good. That yes. one was a lot of fun. I, like uh, I think I'm going to go Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. Tim Heidecker's just, like, there, and I don't <laughs> think he says a word. He's just the husband, or he's the groom, like, <laughs> and he's just there. Keep going, Jay. 21 Jump Street, A Star is Born, Crazy Rich Asians, Easy A, How to Train Your Dragon, Interstellar, Lion, Megamind, Prisoners, Shutter Island, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, or White House Down? Megamind. My, Megamind has one of my favorite jokes ever, and it's mm-hmm. the uh, space dad is uh-huh. Marlon Brando Jor-El, yeah. but, he, but he's doing, he's doing <laughs> Godfather, Godfather yeah. Marlon Brando. <laughs> that is a great movie. Make another selection, Jay. 1917, Black Swan, Frozen, Gravity. I, Tanya, Knives Out, Love and Other Drugs, Dark Waters, Room, Skyfall, The Purge, or Valentine's Day. Just the first purge? Yep. Knives Out. Oh my god. There's another one. All right. Ten Cloverfield Lane, Us, Dunkirk, Get Out, Just Go With It, Le Miserable, Maleficent, No Strings Attached, Ready Player One, the Hunger Games, we need to talk about Kevin or Zootopia. Ooh, Z- Zootopia is really good. I think I'm going to go 10 Cloverfield Lane because he got creepy John, John, Goodman. John Goodman in it. While he was still fat and a yeah. good actor. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. A Quiet Place, no. <laughs> Coco, Guardians of the Galaxy, Inception, Jurassic World, Life of Pi, Mad Max Fury Road, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Split, Thor Ragnarok, Wonder or X Men: Days of Future Past. Mad Max: Fury Road. <laughs> mm. Pro- probably, maybe the best movie of the 2010s. It'd be Guardians for me, but I I, I respect Mad Max's choice. All right, the last movie. This all comes down to this. All right, Arrival, Big Hero Six, Divergent, Flipped, Grown Ups, Justice League. <laughs> La La Land, Magic Mike, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, good movie if you haven't seen it, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, The Maze Runner, and We're the Millers. 
Okay, I, I was gonna go with Big Hero Six, but then it was Into the Spider Verse, which I mean is is I, I Spider Verse Two was solid, but Into the Spider Verse is so dang good. Mm-hmm. Like, we're going with, with well, Into the Spider. Verse. We really only have had half of the second one. So True, far, you're so. right. <laughs> well, Jay, it's off. All right, it got close. August. Oh, yeah, one month, one <laughs> month too long. Yeah, sucks to suck, Buzzfeed. Uh, yeah, Buzzfeed once again getting getting things about me wrong. All right, Jay, and I knew we had to do this one for you. This will wrap it up. Do your fast food and condiment preferences match up with the majority? Find out in this fast food poll. All right. Pickles, good or bad? Good. You're in the majority. All right. All right. Onions, good or bad? Good. You are in the majority. All right. Uh, Ketchup, good or bad? Ooh. I'm not a huge ketchup fan. But, like, I'm thinking, like, when I go to McDonald's, I usually get, like, ketchup for my fries. So you do eat it. So, yeah. So I'll go. I, there are there are situations where I think it would be good. Like, it is good. So I will say good. Okay. You're in the vast majority on that one. Apparently only 17% of people who voted didn't like it. Uh, what about mustard? I, I like mustard. Mustard's good. Ooh, that one's about 50-50. A little more divisive on the mustard. Curly fries? Uh, oh, good. 95%. All on right. One. All right. Uh, how do you like your hamburger, Jay? Loaded or plain? Ooh. Lo- uh, lo- I- loaded up. Put all the toppings on there. If I don't want something, I'll take it off. All right. You are So you are in the majority on all those categories. Hmm. You know, that wouldn't really be a great thing to end on, Jay. So let's do something. I know Jay probably won't get it all. All right. This Greek mythology quiz is so hard, even the gods would struggle to ace it. All right, let's do one more. All right, here we go. Um, do you know who Pygmalion and Galatia are? Was she a kind young sculpt? Was he a kind young sculptor who couldn't find himself a wife, so he made a sculpture that represented his dream wife, and the god Aphrodite turned it into a real woman? Was she a priestess of Artemis that got exiled after he, a hunter, attacked her? Was she a nymph cursed by Hera because she was compared to her beauty? Or was she cursed by Hera because her father hadn't made a sacrifice and was spared by him? I'm going to go with the third one. Wrong, it was the first one. Okay. (laughs) Yes, Pygmalion. If you ever hear something described as Pygmalion, that's where guys make like creepy sex dolls. Oh, gross. All right. That look like real women. (laughs) Like the one you can buy that looks like Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. (laughs) Not that I would would order such a thing. I didn't need to know that existed. Uh, But now I do. Adonis was a lover to whom, Jay? Uh, You've heard of an Adonis, I'm sure. Hera, Apollo, Pan, or Aphrodite? Uh, let's say Aphrodite, because she's the goddess of love, right? Correct. All right. All right. Which of the following is not a spirit or god of water? Gorgasus, Asus, Thetis, or Nerissus? I have no fucking clue. Um, let's say Asus, because it's a brand of shoes. And so here's my logic. It's a brand of shoes, which you don't wear shoes in the pool. (laughs) It's Gorgasus. All right. Also, I could be wrong about it being a brand of shoes. Aeneas was the founder of Rome, and he was a son of Aphrodite. Who was his father? Ares, Hermes, Priapus, or Anasis? Uh, let's go with Priapus. I have no idea who that is. It was Anasis. Ah, oh, darn. <laughs> Priapus. I'm guessing that's where we get Priapism from, where you have your erection for too long. Because <laughs> he was, uh, I think he was a sculptor. Okay. <laughs> How many of the 12 gods of Olympus were Zeus's kids? All? <laughs> no. <laughs> Three, six, seven, or nine, Jay. How, how busy do you think? Well, I know, we, know, <laughs> we know Zeus was getting busy with lots of things and lots of forms, but how many gods did he actually have as children? Oh, boy. Um, off the top of my head, I, can at, I, I think I can at least think of three, I think. Now I know. Okay, no, no. I'm going to say... Was six one of them? Yep. I'll say six. You are correct. All right. Athena, Apollo, Artemis, Hephaestus, Ares, and Hermes are Zeus's children. Okay. Uh, so, which one of these is one of the 12 gods of Olympus, Jay? 
Helios, Iris, Hades, or Hestia? So that, that's the question. Does Hades count as a god of Olympus? I would assume no. I'm going to say Hestia. You are correct. All right. While Hades is well known, he is not an Olympian. Yep. Because, yeah, he's the god of the underworld. And also, a lot of people say Poseidon, Zeus's brother, but he's not because he's the god of the sea. Yep. <laughs> All right. Who did not try to kill Hercules? Hades, Artemis, Hera, or Agaius? Um, let's see. All right. Well, let me let me pull all my Hercules knowledge. <laughs> Disappointment. Zero to hero just like that. That's it. Those are the only two things I have. Oh, and the Dwayne Johnson movie that I kind of know a little bit about. <laughs> um, you know, he did some labors. Oof. Yeah, he did some labors. He uh, when he smiled, the girls went wild. Uh, I know that. Um, they slapped his face on every vase on every vase. Um, I'm going to say... Appearance fees and royalties. <laughs> had cash we're, to burn. Man, we're going to get sued by Disney <laughs> so many times. Um, <laughs> um, I'll, man, my stalling tactic. Um, who did not try to... I'm going to I'm gonna make a... Uh, why not Hades? Let's let's make a joke. Let's say that Disney got it completely wrong. You are correct. Oh Hades actually never attempted to harm Hercules at all. Because even though he was an illegitimate son of Zeus, he still saw him as his brother's son. Way to go, Hades. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Hera despised him, obviously, for being another one of Zeus's illegitimate kids. Uh, Agaius hated him and tried to drown him, and Artemis shot him in the leg uh, for injuring her sacred stag. Okay. But yeah, it's very funny that Disney picked the one god that never messed with Hercules. Right. <laughs> Xanthus, a river god, almost drowned Achilles and his companions. How was he defeated? Uh, they forked the river. And by the river, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your final answer? Uh, sure, why not? Right, no. <laughs> I'll give you the hint. All right. Zeus ordered him to stop. Hephaestus burned the river with his fire. Odysseus figured out something was wrong and tricked the gods into believing Achilles drowned. Or Poseidon found him out and banished him. I'm going to say the, the tricks, the, the third one. No, Hephaestus actually evaporated okay. the river with his fire. That's right. His fire is so good it can burn water. Oh, man. Who was Theseus's father? We have Aeneas, Agaius, Ares, and Poseidon. Um, I don't fucking know. Uh, the I'll give you a hint. Theseus is famous for horses. And uh, one of these gods is also famous for being related to horses. Okay. It's not the god you would expect. Because it's Poseidon, right? Yes. All right. <laughs> yes, that is correct. How many of his kids did Kronos eat? Kronos being the titan. Yep. Eating, yeah, eating, yeah, yeah. He ate kids up until uh, Zeus's mom decided to feed him a rock, and he's a big dumb idiot, so he couldn't tell the difference between right. his son and a rock. Who? um, Nine. The choices are three, four, five, and six. Oh. <laughs> I thought maybe you had some knowledge base feathers. And we're trying to figure it out in your head like you did with the gods. <laughs> um, five. You are correct. Hey, there. all right. He ate Hera, Poseidon, Hades, Hestia, and Demeter. Of course, they didn't die because they're gods. Yeah. But he yeah. ate them still. And also, man, Demeter, get the... Get that vampire off your boat. <laughs> <laughs> Last voyage of the Diomedes. I would just splash his ass yeah. because, as we know, Dracula can't Dr get Dracula's wet. can't get wet. No, I was wrong to say that, Jay, and I regret it. <laughs> now I'm going to make up for it with this last question. <laughs> Lastly, what did the box of Pandora contain? Was it air spirits, gifts for the humans like peace, love, faith, wealth, curses for humankind like fear, envy, hunger, pain, or nothing? Boy, wouldn't it be funny? Or like, you know, we ha literally have the Pandora's box as like a thing that people mention, like when mm -hmm. stuff goes wrong. Wouldn't it be really funny if it's like Pandora? You know, yeah, when things go wrong, peace, love, and understanding. <laughs> uh, the curses thing. You are correct, sir. So actually, Jay, you actually did pretty good on that quiz. Hell's yeah. You mean? Let's see. Uh, yeah, that's a solid B. All right, man. Better, well, Jay, better than I ever did in school. Uh, Jay knows more Greek mythology than I gave him credit for. <laughs> All right. Well, anyway, like we I said. It's time to wrap this up. We've gone far off the rails. <laughs> like we've said, Mother Krampus 2, uh, Slayride, S-L-A-Y-R-I-D-E. Uh, 
has, I think, nothing to do with the first Mother Krampus. Very excited. You talking about Fra Peaches? Oh, one and the same. <laughs> Except not, maybe? I don't know. I've not seen this one yet. I'm I'm excited to watch it. All right, here we go. Uh, but yeah, if, so if you want to watch along with us, uh, uh, Mother Krampus 2, uh, coming up next. Uh, otherwise, get in touch with us on social media. We are at Horror for Holidays. That's Horror the Number Four Holidays. Send us an email, horrorfortheholidays at gmail.com. And this is coming out two Mondays from now, right, Jay? No, we, we, we only record this one week in advance. Yeah, this is yeah. coming out uh, September 9th. 9th. Yep. So I believe it'll be a week after that, right? That our totally rad Christmas episode should be out. I, around I think that so. Time. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah, it'll be. It was, uh, so then the sixteenth will be Mother Krampus two. We'll have a one last stocking stuffer, and then it'll be spooktacular. Yeah. Then it'll be spooktacular time. So get ready for that. Five straight episodes of of Halloween horror movies, I'm and then excited. maybe a little break. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. I'm excited for you guys to see the new uh, artwork for this year. Oh, man. It's going to be great. But, yeah. Uh, also, uh, subscribe on your podcatcher of choice. Five stars. Uh, let us know how bad we're doing. Five-star review. Subscribe on YouTube. Ring the bell. Leave us comments. Let us know how stupid we are. All that good stuff. And uh, if you do listen to Stocking Stuffers, let us know what you want us to do on Stocking Stuffers. Jeff and I have some fun, silly ideas coming up, but and we're always looking for more stuff. In relation to this particular Stocking Stuffer... Uh, are there any movies that are well regarded that you don't like? Leave it in the comments. Oh yeah, that's a great that's a great one. Yeah, I didn't care for the Godfather. Didn't care for it. <laughs> didn't care for. It. All right. Anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for getting listening. We'll see you again next week with Mother Krampus too. Yes, indeed. Goodbye. Bye. Why, it's me, Fred Peaches. <laughs> Fru Peaches? Fru Peaches is here. <laughs> <laughs>